My name is Brian Weinschenker, and, I'm, and I am a professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I'm pleased to speak to you about a publication of which I'm the senior author that is entitled McArdle's Sign, a Specific Sign of Multiple Sclerosis. In this study, we describe a new clinical sign that is highly specific for multiple sclerosis. Misdiagnosis is a common problem in the clinical care of patients with multiple sclerosis. Myelopathy, which is one of the most common complications and indicators of multiple sclerosis, has a wide differential diagnosis, including spinal cord compression, infarction, and other inflammatory disorders and neoplasms. But MS is one of the commonest causes. McArdle's sign refers to a rapid and reversible weakness of upper motor neuron sensitive muscles that is associated with neck flexion. This name is based on a phenomenon described in 1987 in a single publication by students of MJ McArdle, who was a neurologist at the National Hospital for Neurologic Diseases in the UK. They described a patient with advanced MS who had a spastic paraparesis. He walked with his neck hyperextended, and when he flexed his neck, he was unable to walk at all. Based on this report and my own observation of similar patients, I studied weakness induced by neck flexion in patients with MS and those with other myelopathies over several decades and observed that this sign is both highly sensitive for multiple sclerosis and is present in the vast majority of patients with, with MS and especially those with any findings of limb weakness or myelopathy. And it was also highly specific for MS and distinguished patients with MS from those with other causes of myelopathy. In this study, we conducted a blinded study of approximately 50 patients with MS, 25 healthy controls, 25 with other causes of myelopathy, and five with finger extension weakness due to peripheral nerve lesions we found that a 10% or greater decrease in strength as measured with a torque measurement device that we developed for this study was 100% specific and about 70% sensitive for MS compared to other myelopathies, which of course is the group that was most important to clinically distinguish. In this figure, we demonstrate the device that was used. Patients were asked to extend their fingers against a recording bar indicated with this red arrowhead, which was either fixed or moved against the patient's resistance using a lever shown by the green arrow. We performed five successive trials of extension followed by flexion. In this next figure, we show an example of weakness that was developed, that developed with neck flexion. We measured peak torque or strength in extension and flexion as shown by the blue line and averaged the difference over four trials. As the recording of the subject with MS in the top panel dramatically indicates, there's a drop in strength that occurs consistently when the neck is flexed. No change is seen in the controlled subject in the bottom panel. This is a unique and new sign that to my knowledge has not been used in clinical practice elsewhere and we hope that its clinical value for diagnosis will eventually spread beyond Mayo Clinic. It is a study with a message that can be immediately translated into clinical practice because the sign is easily demonstrated at the bedside. And from our studies, clinical detection, especially when the decrease in strength with neck flexion is moderate or marked, is quite reliable when compared with the decrease in strength that we measured with the device that I showed you. When the sign is equivocal, the device does provide confidence that the clinical observation is real, however. This observation will hopefully help increase the certainty of diagnosis and ensure a rapid and accurate diagnosis of demyelinating myelopathy. We hope, of course, that others will independently verify our findings clinically and with strength measurement devices. We do not yet fully understand the pathogenesis, but we speculate that it might be due to a physiologic phenomena, probably conduction block, that is induced by a mechanical stretch of the spinal cord with neck flexion. 
We are undertaking studies with motor evoke uh, potentials to address this possibility. McArdle's sign may assess uh, the proportion of viable axons that experience conduction block and accordingly might help identify patients who might improve with treatments directed to reduce conduction block, such as delfampridine, although the pathophysiology of this phenomena must be further addressed before this conclusion can be reached. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy reading the article and find it useful in your clinical practice. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.